Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. There are many coaches in our universe, and they help out with many things that are essential from business and life and all of that. But sometimes we overlook the financial end of things, and for that, there is financial coaching. Think of it. Can you honestly answer this question and say yes when I say, is everything in your financial world for your life, your family, is in perfect shape? Everything is the way it should be. No stone unturned. You're comfortable with everything. Everything's perfect. I doubt you're going to say yes. There's little things floating out there that you might not even realize that is draining your financial resources. And that's just a part of what she offers right down to things like debt consolidation and elimination, emergency funding. And so so we're going to bring her in here. Lakeisha Townsend, financial coach, joins us here on the program. Welcome. How are you doing? I am awesome. It's so nice to meet you today. Uh, this was definitely a surprise. I, I listened to you on the other podcast. And so I knew your voice. And so now I get to put a face with a voice. So I love it. <laughs> well, I love it too, because what you offer is essential for all of us. And it's one of those things where, well, I'm going to say right now, clear, I am financially illiterate. It doesn't mm. interest me. I don't, I do care, but I don't choose mm. to like, I just, and, and yeah. I think I, I echo what many of us say. It's just like, eh, I don't want to deal with it. And then you put it over the side and then you turn around and you're like, wait a minute, how did I, why do I have 14 subscriptions? All this money is just flying out the door. I'm not even, I don't even know what I subscribe to and now I'm paying for it. I mean, that's just one aspect. What do you yeah. hear from people that you first start talking to and or work with? that they're going through now in their financial situation? Well, just actually just recently, um, uh, a client that I'm getting ready to work with, she was, she's a nurse and she was telling me, I'm, you know, I make all kinds of money, but I don't know where it's going. I'm, I'm always broke, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So a lot of people, it isn't always necessarily how much they're making is what they do and what, what they're making already. Mm -hmm. And so what I find is that people, just like, or, you know, just put the blinders on and just, just like doing whatever, you know, their money is actually gone before it even hits their bank account, you know, a lot of times because they've already spent it. And it's like, well, you know, long as I don't, you know, long as I don't have to deal with it right now, you know, I, I'm, you know, I don't have to worry about it. And then until something big comes up, then it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? And so, and then they start trying to look and then they see, oh my God, I got money going here. I owe people here. I haven't paid this, you know, it's just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so what I come in to do is try to say, okay, let's breathe. <laughs> let's breathe first. Okay. All right. And then forgive yourself. That's the first thing. Forgive yourself. You know, we've all been there. You know, we've all messed up with money. So, you, you know, you're not on this island by yourself. Actually, the island is huge. <laughs> you know, we just don't know that there's a lot of people on this island because we keep it to ourselves. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about it with our spouses or our significant others. And we just go through life just hoping that things work out. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I, you know, they want us to, um, to adopt the electric car now. <laughs> So that's kind of how we do with our finances. You know, we got it on, you know, uh, you know, on autopilot that we don't have no idea what it's doing. You know, it's one thing to, you know, manage those autopilots. But if you just got it on autopilot and you're not control over it, then, you know, no, no telling where you would end up. You could end up anywhere, Steve, you know. So what I'd like to do is to, to let them know is that, OK, I'm here to help. I'm here to, you know, give you that hope back. Because that's a lot what happens. You lose that hope that, you know, I can do this. You know, you know, since I can't do this, then, you know, I'm, you know, it's my money anyway. So I should spend it. Mm. Have you heard that? Have you, I mean, have you came in contact with something like that? Oh. <laughs> have you even thought of that, Steve? hundred <laughs> percent. And, and it's so true that we don't talk about our financial situation with, with many because there's an mm -hmm. element of embarrassment, you know, yes. you're working your butt off and then, 
money's flying out the window, but you don't want to admit it or even get close to admitting it. And then it comes down to numbers. You don't want people knowing what you're making and your financial situation. People may think that you are loaded. Everything is great. Like, you know, it just looks that way. Meanwhile, you know, you're, you're rubbing the two pennies together. Uh, I want to share with everybody 631 319 62 Seven five six three one three one nine six two seven five. Got a question, financial question, or instant yeah. feedback, Steve at gmail.com is how you reach us today. Yeah. When it comes to I guess we should talk about budget building, because that is the you know yeah. the first part, mm-hmm. having yeah. a budget. What are some basic guidelines that we should adhere to? All right. So basically, you know, I you know, I I base a lot of things that I do on on the Bible. So basically you want to write it down, write the vision, <laughs> make it plain, you know. So, you know, so when you read it, you can run with it. So basically getting those numbers down, you know, on paper, you know, there are some people who like Excel spreadsheet, you know, they have software out there that you can use, whichever way suits your situation, do it. Then let's look at the numbers. Okay. So don't be afraid of the numbers. You know, you might, yeah, you might be, you know, way out there or you might be like, you might surprise yourself like, oh, I'm not doing all that bad, Mm. you know? That I thought I was doing. Yeah. So, but if we don't look, if we don't sit down and look at the numbers, get them right in front of us, and see what we have coming in, see what's going out, even you know, even knowing what our investments, you know, we have our investments out there, and we just like they're out there, you know, in the cloud almost. In the cloud. We don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, know it's so true. I, we and I believe we have a call, but on your last point there, um, my <laughs> my financial guy for investments and all that. Um, I was closer to him. He moved to Hawaii. So now we got at least six hour time difference. And I'm, you know, I'm glad things are great for him, but it's kind of off my radar. So that's, that's one I got to circle back to. Let's, let's grab a call. Hi, uh, who's this? Uh, Scott, Uh, I'm looking actually for advice on divorce, but I have two questions actually. Uh, So um, I'm going through a divorce. Um, I worked on Wall Street for 20 years. Um, but it, it has affected my job, um, my, uh, you know, my anxiety, my emotions, et cetera. But also, I'm trying to start a new business, uh, so I'd like your advice on how to cope with that, if that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. All right. So, he, so what I heard was he's going through a divorce? Yeah. Yes. Um, did you leave a job? I cause there was, it was going in and out. I couldn't, I didn't hear most of that. It's... Well, it's it's not it's not going well. Like I, I used to be a okay. high performer, and you know, I, I've definitely um, uh, gotten a little bit. Uh, I don't know, on on emotional about. I, I used to be straight on getting into work, whatever. But now it's affecting me, um, in in my uh, performance. By the way, so, okay, okay, gotcha. That makes sense. So uh, what I want to ask first, okay, you said you know affecting you emotionally. Emotionally, um, how can you put that into words? How it's affecting you emotionally? It, it, mainly uh, financial. Yeah, I mean, okay. literally, it's you know, I didn't see that coming, um, mm-hmm. and it, it basically uh, has affected my whole life. So um, I'm looking for uh, to start a new company, and you know, it, it's been very difficult. Yeah. Well, I if you're, I mean, if you're still going through a process of divorce, I probably wouldn't. I, if you can, I wouldn't. I would wait to start that new business because mm-hmm. then, you know, depending on how long you've been married and what you know state you're living in, she might be entitled to that. And, um, and by the way, let me just add, we don't dispense legal advice here, just, but right, just, yes. just so you understand, I understand, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, just that's understand a, that. A great yes. point. Um, that, you know, that's, you know, that, that's what I would, you know, kind of, you know, talk to your lawyer about, um, definitely, because I'm, I know that you have one. Um, emotionally, I would, I would tell you to, um, Wait. you need to seek out counseling. You know, we need to, um, definitely deal with our mental health. Okay. You know, I know a lot of men don't like to face that, that, you know, there are mental things that are going on with you. So I would definitely suggest before you kind of jump into the financial part, you need to deal with your mental health because if you don't get that under control, you're not going to be able to to, uh, deal with your finances. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Um, Listen, it was great to talk to you, by the way. 
Um, I, I do need uh, some counseling, and you know. Um, anyway, I was listening to your podcast. You know, I was listening to you. It, it really works. Um, I, I really think it's good advice. However, um, you know what 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 I'm really looking for. Also, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, it's a, well actually what you said before was was right on. Uh, I should wait. Um, yeah. I don't need to start this right away. And that, you know, it could be, you know, impacting on my uh, situation. I commend you. I commend you for wanting to move, move on. (laughs) That's that's a big plus there. You know, in his, he could be, you know, stagnant in, you know, being married a number of years and and wants to uh, just kind of chill for a while. But, you know, but got to get all the, got to get this together before you can work on that. We have a question from Dawn. She checks in from Ocala, Mm -hmm. Florida. She says, which is better to buy or lease a car? Buy. (laughs) Okay. Hmm. Because the the reason why I say that is because you're not ever owning anything. Yeah. You know, and when you lease, you know, even when people buy a car, as soon as they pay off, they think they got to go get another car. You know, we just have this, you know, thing with society that we always, you know, once we pay something off, we got to go get something new. We got to go get something new. I, you know, my car will be 15 years old in um, December. And, uh, you know, so I get the regular maintenance on it. Yes, I mean, yes, I would love to get another car. But why do I want that other car? Is it because, I, you know, I just want another car because I, I didn't pay that one off, you know? So, yeah, but going back to her question, definitely buying it because you're going to pay more when you lease a car. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and and you're you're paying the taxes on that vehicle for the dealership. Yeah, yeah. So when you give it back right. in three years, they can sell it to somebody yeah. else, and and you did them a favor by paying the same taxes that you would have paid mm-hmm. if yeah. you bought the vehicle. And by the way, right. you're not alone. I believe the average now is twelve years. Twelve years that people are holding on to their vehicles. So yes, yeah, yeah it yeah. and. And why? Well, you, you made the investment anyway. <laughs> so why? Right. Yeah. You want to own that. Yeah. I Isn't mean, it amazing? You know? uh, Lakeisha, yeah. as you get older, you know, when you were younger, mm-hmm. it's like, like you said, like you buy the car. I can get, let me get another yeah. one. Let me get another. One. Now it's like, right. man, why do we need another one? It's working. It's right. fine. As long as you take care of it, it's all good. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about eliminating debt. Many of us have yeah. that credit card, all of that, mm-hmm. um, some, some basic or quick suggestions on that. What do you got? Stop spending. <laughs> basic. That's, you know, that's basic. Okay. So a lot of people, you know, have this, you know, retail therapies, you know, like, you know, the caller before is, you know, you depressed and you're trying to find an outlet. So most people, um, spend money as an outlet. And so that's the first thing, you know, when we, we get, we sit down and start talking, the first thing is that you, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the first week you cannot, you cannot spend that week. Let's see, you know, see how, see how, see how well you can do that week going, going out to the store and coming back with nothing. Mm. Let's see if you can do it, you know? So those little challenges, you know, to try to get you started. Because a lot of people, you know, they don't, they don't, it's like they don't feel like they can stop spending, you know, until you, you know, until they talk to someone to have someone from the outside looking in for them and say, you don't need to buy this. Remember, we need to find out what is, what is a want, what is a need, you know? Do you find, and so when you, when, you some, go ahead. when somebody does that, when they start spending, like they could be fairly frugal or financially mm-hmm. aware and then, mm-hmm. you know, Amazon buy something, mm-hmm. and then eh, a week later, eh, and do I really? Yeah, why not? And then fast forward six months later, and now there's something showing up at the door every other or every third day, yes. where yes. you get into this cycle, mm-hmm. and yeah. then it comes. Then then entitlement comes into play. Then mm-hmm. I'm I'm working hard. I deserve it. It's only fourteen dollars. And and then right. and then up free shipping and on and on and on and then you don't yes. realize if you go back and take I don't, don't even look at my Amazon <laughs> account 
if you look back, <laughs> and some of it's for convenience. You know, if you need paper plates, okay, yeah, that's there. different. But then yeah. some of the other stuff, do you really need it? Should yeah. you ask yourself those types of questions before you make the purchase and or, I don't know, leave it in the cart for a day? Yes, I, th- you know, I think you should at least, especially if it's a huge purchase, you know, um, to at least do 48 hours like and think about it. I mean, why, why are you buying it? What, I mean, do you, do you already have one? Are you just trying to upgrade? Um, did your neighbor have it? And so, okay, now I need to have it. You know, what is your why? Why is why are you trying to buy this item? Like, and can you wait? Can you delay gratification and say, okay, I do need this item, but okay, I'm going to do like a, what they call a sinking fund, and I'm going to put money towards it until so I have it, and I know that I have that money for that particular item, so it's not going to take away from something else. Mm-hmm. So see there, see there, see there's some thinking to that. See there, you know, there's you know you're actually working with your money, you know, to like, okay, I will need this item, but what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to save up the money first. I'm going to put, you know, put money aside, you know, you know, and even set a goal, you know, so if it's like, let's say we have to say $30. So, so it's easy math. Uh, it's $30 item. All right. So by, by the 15th of this month, I'm going to put money aside to get that item that's thirty dollars. And then once you do that, then you actually see that you can you can control your spending. Because see, you have not just went ahead and just, just bought it because you could, but no, you actually thought about it. You pl- plan for it. You uh, put some effort into it to um, say, okay, I'm just not spending but just because I'm I can spend. I'm spending with a purpose. Mm. I love that. Um yeah. we don't do that. Many of us, mm-hmm. we just, because mm-hmm. Amazon has created a society yes. of one click and that's great. That's, you know, for convenience, yes. one click does it all, but we don't think about it. You know, it, right. mm-hmm. <clears throat> do you really need it? And how are you going to benefit from it? And I think the, yeah. the kiss of death is it's so easy to return stuff. So you return yeah. it, yeah. but then you return it to your Amazon account. Many of us, because it takes longer to get it into your, your credit card account. And then right. your, the mindset is, well, you know, I've got a stockpile of money sitting there and yeah, it's okay. It's almost like it's free, but it's not. Right. Uh, but it's not, yeah, because you still got to pay that credit card. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to mention your books. You have, a, a, okay. do I have it right? You have two books? I have, I have, no, I have one, okay. but thank you for thinking. <laughs> oh, you know, maybe one of them, one of them's a paperback. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So it's called Your Wealth Lives Within. And so the the premise of the book was I wanted it to be a companion to my coaching because what I wanted people to do is to read this and, you know, to take it is going to take you back. It's actually like a therapy session because you're going to, you know, go back, you know, when you were a child and, you know, and think about, okay, was, you know, was your parents open with each other with money? Were they open with you with money? How did you see, mm-hmm. you know? them you know handle money you know was it always a stressful time or you know what did it seem like you know oh things just appeared you know like they went outside and pulled the money off the tree you know like most little kids think that parents can do and so basically it's you know it's it's a mental book yeah it's a definitely a mental book to get you to think about how your surrounding you know uh nurture versus nature how it has affected your finances because it does it affects your finances Hmm. interesting point because there are some of us that go through I, 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 there's different terms for it, but scarcity complex where we feel that we can't be abundant or we can't make money as we walk around saying, I'm never going to have enough. I'm never going to have enough for that car. I'm, I'm, I'm just always behind, you know, I'll get another yeah. job, but it just doesn't, I'm never, I'm always behind, I'm never ahead. But if you trace Mark. back and look at your parents it may have come from there where you have that mindset that you're not going to make enough. Um, and let's face it, what parent yeah. hasn't said to their child, what are you doing? Money doesn't grow on trees. And right away, yeah. you know, one child may just rolls right off of them. Another would be like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm never going to have enough money, you know, and they don't know why. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, and a lot of people, they think that, oh, if I just make more money, then I will be able to do this, that, and the other. 
But, you know, if you look at the average, most people who make more money spend more money. Mm, more money, because, more problems. And right. And that's because they haven't, you know, learned the concept of managing what they already have. See, they already thinking about more right. when they haven't, you know, you know, they're not, you know, satisfied or appreciative of what they already have, you know. So, I, you know, I have um, <clears throat> on my son, I, you know, I told him that to not buy a car because he, you know, somebody uh, wrecked his car, you know, it wasn't his fault. Mm. They totaled it out. And so, and he already had another car. So I told him, I said, this is what I, you know, I would wish for you to do <laughs> because, you know, now he's 20 something years old. So, you know, he can do what he wants. Yep. I told him, I said, I would wish for you to now take that money because you had two car payments. Now take that money from the car that now gone, put it on the car that you have, pay it off because it was like, I think it was $12,000, you know, for that car that you can get that probably paid off maybe in a half a year. And then if you want to get another car, then, okay, I'll say, okay, you know, you can get another car because now you only have one car payment instead of two. Yeah. Completely. It's a great feeling when your vehicle's paid off. <laughs> like when you, mm-hmm. you make yes, that, that, yes. that last payment. Yes. Yes. It's, it's liberating. Um, it's very, it really is. Real briefly. How did you yeah. get into doing this, helping people and coaching them with their finances? Well, I, the, re- the reason why I got into and actually became certified is because a lot of people kept asking me, well, you know, because I paid off my house, you know, I pay, you know, paid off my car and stuff. And they're like, well, how did you do that? You know, I said, well, I mean, I was diligent. I, you know, I focused and, you know, and I just, that's, that was my goal. I wanted to pay off my house before my son finished college. And I did. Wow. Good for you. And so. Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know, I can't really teach them like what, you know, what's in my mind you know, for me. So that's why I get, you know, I went and got some training to, you know, to give, you know, to find some basics that I could help people with um, to help them on their journey. Cause see, their journey won't be the same as mine. And so that's what, you know, financial coaching is. We have to realize that, you know, even though, every, you know, these two people are both in debt, but their journeys are different. And so you have to treat them differently. You know, you, you can, you know, you can have a basic, you know, template, but you have to customize it to their situation. Totally. And so that's, and I, I, you know, because I, you know, I've gotten out of debt. I, you know, that's my, I want everybody out of debt. <laughs> that's my thing. I want everybody to be free. <laughs> you know. And I love that about you, that you, you care because you know what it feels like. You know? Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. it's a, and good for you paying off. Uh, your house. It is. That's amazing. That really is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, right back to the, you know, paying off the car. It's liberating. It's just like, wow, I did this. I, and maybe we can't pay off our houses anytime soon in many different situations, but we're throwing money out the window. Like literally it's just flying. And, and I don't think we realize it every time we drop that right. credit card down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I get credit card points back. So, and I will, I'll tell you this in one business account, I have credit card rewards mm-hmm. and a decent amount of money over the last couple of years. I haven't mm-hmm. touched it. It's just sitting there. I'm making sure that, you know, they can't, it doesn't deplete. It just sits right. there and I'm afraid to touch it because I know once I do <laughs> floodgate opens, it's like, just sit there, <laughs> nest egg over to the side. You know, every time I spend, I get right. some, you know, some points back from that. Um, we're out of time. There's so much to talk about here. Uh, yeah, somebody's got questions, even considering maybe working with you as a, a financial coach. How do they find you, Lakeisha? Well, I have a website. It's called um, TTP Coach, Financial Coaching dot com, and you can email me. You can always email me. I love emails. You can uh, email me at TTP Coaching Services at gmail dot com. Or you can call me at 614-715-4619. Got it. TTPcoachingservices.com. Great website, by the way. Really explains a lot. A lot of insight there and video as well. And uh, great meeting you, talking with you, getting uh, insight. you too. And and looking forward. Yeah, it's awesome. Next time we get together and I'll dump more financial problems on you. Trust me. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Looking forward to it. I'm ready. Same, same. All right. We'll catch up soon. Thanks again. Um, Bye-bye. Thanks. We'll be right back. (laughs) 
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Are you struggling to stay on budget? Do you need hope and not judgment? Well, my name is Lakeisha Townsend, founder of Trust the Processes Financial Services. We offer that hope in our individual coaching classes. Book a consultation today at ttpcoachingservices.com and let's get started today. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by End Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.